Hey guys, this is Adrian Vandenberg, all the way from Holland. You're watching CMS TV. Turn it up, the sound, that is, the picture. Um, whenever I'm in a picture, it's better to turn the picture off. From the forthcoming release from Doc, and at the end of October, that's uh, Fugitive. There's a couple new Doc and tunes for you this evening. Cool, 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 mm -hmm. cool. Yep. Just before that, we heard uh, the Cult with Phoenix, and we heard uh, some THC Groove from the Bullet Boys. That's right. That's right. And uh, just just so you have a level of comfort, I I have been keeping track of the songs and emailing them to Corey. oh good 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 yeah i because i have not <laughs> I, have, I i did last week and i'm keeping track this week okay yeah they they apparently we've come to that point now that we're we have enough listeners that it matters all right well i i did i've been doing that i'm keeping a notepad here and shooting him off the list thank you sir much appreciated because now we're a real radio station. We have to have a playlist now. That's right. Yeah. We, have to get, we have to keep track of all of our songs. Yeah. We have to tell our bosses what we're playing. Yeah. <laughs> is that approved? That's right. Our is boss, Ron Keel. Yeah. Is that approved? <laughs> Are you allowed to play those songs? Yeah. So silly. Well, so silly. But, you know, now that I'm in the royalty game, I'm glad we're checking them in to get these guys. They're, they're one one hundredth of a penny or whatever and yeah, yeah, get their 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 uh fraction of a cent yeah i'm sure they appreciate it i'm sure they do so all right well good thank you i right. appreciate it sure all right do you have anything in particular i have stuff i always have stuff okay. um uh, let's start with this start with just a i i guess this is tragic news did you hear about john oliva no broke his his fucking spine he broke his spine he broke his spine how'd that happen fell okay sabotages john oliva fracture spine i slipped on a wet marble floor <laughs> wow okay ouch in a new interview monsters with monsters madness and magic Sabotage lead singer John Oliva offers an update on new music from the cult metal outfit. He said, well, we were working on a new Sabotage record until I fractured my spine. Hmm. So we have to put that off now until the first of the year. All right. I slipped I on. Uh, I wasn't aware that Sabotage was still an entity at this point. Well, they're, 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 for, they're trying to get a record out. Okay. Oliva has said that he has a full concept. Now, just having a full concept, I don't know what that means for for getting it done and you know getting a record put together. Um, I'm told that all the players are in. Okay. You know, but they really can't do anything now because of TSO season. Well, that's kind of my point because yeah. TSO obviously has replaced Sabotage as the uh, focal point for these guys. Yeah because they've made such a great living over the last 20 plus almost 30 years already with uh, mm -hmm. TSO. Didn't, didn't TSO start in Cleveland in like 95 or some shit? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're heading on their 30 years already as TSO. <laughs> That's amazing. I remember uh, TSO uh, playing in Cleveland. They had like four dates in a row and then they went over to Youngstown and they played like three dates or something like that. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of where the Genesis of TSO started was mm -hmm. that, uh, I believe it was WNCX and that bill. What's his face. Bill Lewis. Bill Lewis was very instrumental in pumping up this whole. Yeah, exactly. John Oliva's pain, uh, <laughs> in his uh back. you know, pump pumping up the whole TSO thing. Yeah. Because prior to that, they, they were not, you know, what do you call a touring entity? And they just, you know, uh, built that thing up. Uh, who, who was the other guy that uh, he passed away a few years ago? Paul O'Neill. 
Paul Neal, he was very instrumental in the whole TSO success. Mm -hmm. Well, it was his baby. He's the one that came up with it, I guess. Exactly. But, exactly. But yeah, and, and and I mean, there's still Johnny Johnny Lee Middleton is in it. Obviously, Chris Caffrey is in it. John Oliva's part of it. Um, Zach Stevens is. It, I'm not sure if he's still active in it or not, but he's been a part of it at some point. Right. And then there's been so many of the you know classic metal players who have sure. always been a part of it. Uh, Kurt Alex. Vanderhoof of yeah. uh, Metal, metal Shirt. Sure. Alex, Alex Skolnick being a part of it, and you know. A lot of the known players and, you know, unfortunately, or yeah, unfortunately they've made more money doing TSO than they could with their own respective bands. Mm -hmm. Well, it, and it is because they all, they all now, you know, even the bit players, they work their schedule around the TSO schedule. Right. Of course, because that's a, that's a paycheck. It's a big, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, you know. I know we always talk about Mariah and Plush, but Plush is pretty much done until next year because Mariah is going out with TSO. Now, is she on the East Coast version or the West Coast version? I have not heard. I haven't talked to her in probably three, four months. I have not. She's been, you know, I've texted her once or twice and she hasn't texted back. So I'm either on the shit list or she's just busy, which that's probably more likely because I can't imagine that I'm on that shit list as much as I pump that band. But, um, um, yeah, I, I don't know yet. I, she was on the West coast last year. I'm thinking she's probably gonna be on the West coast again this year. I looked at the lineup of, of names mm -hmm. and it's pretty much all the same people. So I'm thinking it's probably going to be pretty much all the same. Doesn't make sense that they would mix and mix them up. Right. You know, it makes, makes more sense. And, and a couple that have already announced where they're at are on the same lineup okay. like um joel holkstra right joel holkstra announced today that he's on the east coast lineup which is where he was last year so so i'm gonna assume she's on the west coast again but right. you know i'll hope she's on if she's on the east coast i'll definitely go that's one that's one exception to the rule of not going to big shows that i will make is i'll i'll go well that that is a spectacular show it is. It's a great well, show. Whether whether you're into Christmas music or not, just mm -hmm. the um, presentation is pretty yeah. spectacular. I I would just like to see her on stage on that huge stage, you know, just because you know we're friends and you know, I love seeing my friends succeed. Sure. In the, my music friends, I like well, seeing my music friends. Well, if it wasn't succeed. for us and the power <laughs> of EMS, no one would have ever known uh, Mariah. From That's right. Band. That's right, Eddie. So true, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the one who told her that she should sing, uh, you know, <laughs> something, uh, some Christmas song. Yeah. I said to her that she should try Oh Holy Night. Now she's on TSO. Yeah. I'm the one who said, have yourself a very merry little Christmas or whatever yes. that is. <laughs> And she sings it to this day. And yes. I, I'm the one who said that would go over really well. That's right, Eddie. You did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a great show. I, I would, I, I have, I think I've seen it six times. Yeah. I've seen it quite a few times myself. And it really doesn't change. I mean, it gets bigger. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a production. It's, it's, yeah. it's not necessarily about the music per yeah. se. It, it is a um, it is a big visual production. Yeah. It's you know. like Phantom of the Opera more than it's a concert. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more of a play than a than a. It's kind of a weird thing because, it, like, the first two thirds of it is definitely rock opera, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, but then that last part is all concert. You know, where they're just ripping and playing and blowing shit up and right. The, the risers that take them out over the crowd and shit. I mean, it's, it's a cool, I, I, I recommend it to anybody. It doesn't matter if you like the music or not, you'll have a good time. It's a, it's a big show. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that, uh, they've got Chris Caffrey, who's one of us. Mm -hmm. And then they've got, uh, Alex Skolnick, who's on the other side of the fence. <laughs> right. <laughs> but obviously music, uh, you know, knows no, no, uh, you know, lines per se, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so, if you could, so if you could leave your political and social views out of it, you could all get along. Can we all get along? 
I just have to imagine that they don't talk politics at all on that tour. Yeah, you can't. There might be a rule. <laughs> yeah. If you're to go out on tour, you are not allowed to talk about politics. Right, of course. That could very well be. Would it surprise you if that is a rule for a lot of no, bands? It wouldn't be surprising to me at all. No. I, I Especially a production like that that has, what, 30 people and 50 roadies or whatever? Yeah. You know, a production that big, you got to think that they got rules in place to keep yeah, everybody. Got to keep, uh, keep the peace among the ranks. That's right. But. Back to J to John Oliva. I mean, there's not much more to this story than that, um, other than he talks a little bit about the record and it's going to be so great and blah, blah, blah. You know, mm -hmm. the, the same old shit that we hear about every record every time. It's going to blow people's faces off. It's going to be amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Put up or shut up. We're done. We're done hearing that it's going to be the greatest sabotage record ever. Again, how do you even know that? How do you yeah. know it's going to be the greatest thing? Yeah, and, and it, of course it will be to him. You know, I mean, for God's sakes, I'm sure I'm sure some of his John Oliva's pain when they were out, he was probably like, this is the best thing I've well, ever done. He, he was on here. He was on yeah. the show for John Oliva's uh, pain, and he yeah. was more or less uh, touting his uncovering uh, Chris Oliva's, you know, box of tapes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and he used some of Chris Oliva's guitar on yeah. Uh, Scraggy's tomb, which you know was a, a, a tip of the hat to the Hall of the Mountain King, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, I mean they they all say it. Fucking Don Doc and told me Shadow Life was the best album he ever did. At one point, <laughs> he sort of took that back, but he did tell me that once. But you know, I, I mean, I, I, that that hype, I just have, I have no use for. I don't even ask bands that question anymore about yeah, the well, Again, the it's, it's subjective. I mean, if, if you play it and you dig it and you like it, go, yeah, this is pretty damn good. Or you, go, eh, you know what? You've done better. Well, and bands lie anyway. There's not well, a band in the world and they have to, I mean, it's their job, but yeah, but, but that's, that's, they're promoting a new product. So they yeah. got to say that you, you got to get this because this is the best fucking thing you ever heard yeah. in your life. I mean, what is John Oliva really going to say? You know what? This thing's never going to measure up to Hall of the Mountain King. It's it's, right. it's definitely a little more sirens or rock hard or whatever. You know, it's not one of our better efforts, but it's something. Yeah. He's not going to say that. Not quite up there with Edge of Thorns, but, you know, we really gave it a, a, a good try. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we got together and gave you something. It says sabotage on the front. What else do you want? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's not going to say that. He's going to say, this is the best fucking thing ever. Yeah. It's been a long time in coming, folks, but it was well worth the wait. 20 years in, yeah. you, you deserve this. You guys won't believe it, but the magic is back. <laughs> the chemistry and the magic were amazing in the studio. Sure it was. I sent that MP3 to Chris, Chris Caffrey, and he threw me back an MP3 that was just what I was thinking. Then I threw him the peace sign and he threw the peace sign right back at me. Right through the zoom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's John Oliva. It's, it's just a quick story. I'm not going to read the whole thing because right. it just goes on and on and on and on and on. So that's John Oliva. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to clean the closet out a little bit. Um, Another box set, man. There's tons of box sets. I guess well, it's the only way to make money now. Yes. Well, I mean, the, you know, the, the well is kind of run dry as far as like, yeah. you know, new music. Now I, I will admit, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not, again, I'm not a hardcore fan. I mean, I, I'm a casual fan, Sure. but, but uh, this, this current winger album, since we were talking about box sets earlier, yeah. this current winger album, it's, it's pretty brutal. It's, it's heavy. Yeah. It's good. It's heavy record. And it's like, wow, this is Winger? All right, cool. They stepped it up. Yeah, it's a pretty heavy record. I, I I like that record. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. That one's good. The Extreme record is real good, too. Oh, yeah, the Extreme record. I That one is just like out the gate, like in your face. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, obviously Nuno is heavily featured Oh yeah. in the new Extreme. But, you know, I'm, I've never been an Extreme fan. I mean, I, I like some of their stuff. Never 
was like, oh man, I love extreme, you know. I'm and surprised you never were into them though, yeah, because he and George know. Lynch are so similar. I know, but I, I just I just never got over the Gary Sharon thing. He, yeah. he he just is very flamboyant. I just yeah. didn't like the whole flamboyant foofy. Foofy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, I I saw him with Joe Perry a few months yeah. ago. And it was just a little, uh, he's a little bit, uh, foofy. <laughs> he just comes off as a little light in the loafers. And I just don't like that. Yeah, I get it. Of course, Jim hates them. Yeah, of course. Of course but but I think the new extreme record is extreme. Yeah, it is. It's extremely it, good. It's, you know, I'm surprisingly mm -hmm. good record. Well, I did like them and I certainly, it, it pains me that Nuno is such a cock. Because musically, that motherfucker is as good as anybody as a player. He, I mean, he's a really, really good player, and he's well, still really well top tier. I, I'll use a I'll use a, a cliche term. He's a monster. Yeah, he's a guitar <laughs> monster. He really is. He's is. I mean, I was listening to pornography last night, just by coincidence. It, sure. it came. Sure. It, it came up and I was listening to the album and I mean, the guitar solos in that thing are almost um, like Malmsteen like in places, but that, but they mixed them back enough to where it wasn't overbearing like right, Malmsteen. Right. It's really quite creative what they did in the studio on several of their records It's very creative. Mm-hmm. But um, and I agree with you. Some of some of the songs, Gary just comes off like a fruit, and <laughs> and that's that kills it for me. <laughs> there's that, and then yeah. and, and you know what the other thing that killed it for me sometimes with them was they were a little bit childish. Yeah, stuff Mom, like I don't want to go to school today. Yeah. Kitty I go. Want to yeah. go outside and play? Yeah. Like what? What is that? Yeah, it's 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 fucking fresh off of Sesame Street. Yeah, it's just. I don't know. I, don't, I is that that one just didn't get it for me. I was yeah. Like, uh. yeah. Kid Ego was was crappy song. They, I mean, they had some crappy songs. Little Jack Horny, you know. They they definitely had some crappy songs. And that being said, then they had some really good stuff. That honestly, most of their great stuff is after it was over. You know, after my favorite tune that they ever did is um is um. Are we ever going to change? Which was at the very end of um, Three Sides. Mm -hmm. But then the, the whole, um, that song, do you know the song, There Is No God from them? Yes. That's like really heavy. <laughs> it's like, whoa, where'd yeah. this band come from? But then, but then they got into the real, you know, wholehearted and. and uh, well, that's earlier. I, I understand. I didn't, yeah. I didn't dig that. And then, of course, the, the ballad, the one. Yeah more than words yeah more than words because you know every you know minivan driving housewife got into mm -hmm. it and it was uh, and that's what broke them that's yeah. that them and mr big had the same problem neither of them were really ballad bands mm -hmm. but because their first hit was a ballad that's all right. people wanted yep and it just it just wrecked them if if they would have if they would have hit with decadence dance Something like that. If that song wasn't six minutes long and they could have actually hit with that heavy song, then they would have they would have had a completely different career. It might not have been better, but you know, I'm I'm sure Gary Gary or Nuno will tell you they're thrilled that they had more than words. Right. Well, again, I mean, if it generated them income and all that, you know, put them in the spotlight. You know, I get that. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is that you know, getting back to Mr. Big and uh, I'm. I don't want what what is that song? I'm the one who wants to be with you. Oh, 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 deep broken. inside. I hope you feel it too. What was that like 91? Uh, something like Some, yeah. somewhere out there. It was 90 because when my daughter was born, we used to use that to put her to sleep. Well, I'll see Honest to God. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, that's, I knew it was like 90, 91, somewhere around there. Yeah. But, uh, man, it's just like, oh, come on. Yeah, it, it's, it's, well, and, and it's sad because when you listen to the bulk of that album, it is really heavy. Yeah. What does that lean into it? 
Oh, uh, Mr. B- yeah, lean into it. There, yeah. There's some really good, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, Paul Gilbert is an amazing player. Well, again, another, another Nuno Betancourt. Yeah. You know, they, these guys are just, you know, top, top notch, but because, mm-hmm. but because they didn't come out at the same time that Eddie Van Halen didn't hit the scene. Yeah. They didn't get the recognition because, you know, you had a lot of great players Mm -hmm. that that were very skilled, very masterful, you know, be it, uh, Eddie Van Halen, uh, George Lynch, uh, Yngwie Malmsteen, uh, Paul Gilbert, uh, Nuno Betancourt, uh, CC DeVille, (laughs) (laughs) you know. And they're, they're very technical, very high skilled players, but they sure. didn't get the recognition because it was too little too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true too. Extreme did come out a little late in the game. That's what I'm saying. So it's yeah. just like, okay, well, we saw all the fast players. We saw the guys who are, wheedly, 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 yeah. you know, and it's like, well, here's another guy that goes, wheedly, wheedly, you know, it's like, yeah. all right, oh, you're another one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Extreme was like the best band in that era that also gave us trickster and ugly kid joe sure you know the same time period so they were like the best band of that era but they certainly were not the best they were not considered in the best with the you know motley crew poison warrant right you know that era they were definitely middle of that pack yeah and and you know of course we've made this comment or this uh reference on the show over the years but uh i think jizzy pearl said it past the weedly 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 guys yeah <laughs> you know weedly 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's what they do they do yeah it's um it's it's weird looking back at it now and yeah you know, it's weird seeing that these guys that were kind of in average bands like a nuno are now considered in like that, that very top tier like Nuno, he pops up with like huge artists. Yeah, yeah, because he plays with a lot of other people. Yeah, it's just weird seeing like him and him and Joe Perry hanging out. Right. In no world should that happen. That should not happen. You know, Joe Perry's not that kind of player. Never was. Yeah, he's just a straight ahead kind of blues rock player. He's like. Uh-huh. A- same vein as like a jimmy page or something yeah and to see him hanging out with nuno it's like dude what is that about you know nuno win a prize do you win a chance to meet him <laughs> and i know they're boys but it just seems weird to yeah. me it seems weird well you know one of the biggest influences that uh, john levin has is nuno bet no no he yeah. just he loves nuno and it's just like well john you in your own right you're a very accomplished guitarist yourself John will never take that compliment. No, of course not. He's he's way too humble. Yeah, John's way. like, I can't even touch a Nuno. Yeah, it's like, I'd be lucky if Nuno let me tune his guitar. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't even carry his guitar case. Yeah. It's like, are you fucking kidding me, John? I've seen you. You are a fucking monster on your on your guitar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, John. I'm no Nuno, though. I'm no Nuno. Nuno's top tier. Nuno's top end. Okay. He is, but so are you. You know, I, I always laugh when when John says that kind of stuff. And because I know. Like, and, and believe me, when I'm on the road with them, which is, you know, six or eight shows a year. Mm-hmm. How was the show tonight, bro? What Did I do okay? Did I do? It's like, John, you were out there killing it. Are you yeah. kidding me? Are you sure? Because I think I fucked up a little bit under. It's not far. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up with your one note that you missed yeah, and nobody noticed it. No one you noticed know, it. I, mean, I was just like doing it and I kind of think I think I fucked up that one chord and blah, blah. it's like yeah. shut up. It's like Jesus Christ, dude. Your singer's struggling to bark out the lyrics and you think that people are noticing that you fucking slipped on one note? Stop it. Come on. I know John is the he's the worst. I, I honestly think he doesn't think he's a good player. I agree. He really always comes off like I lucked into this gig and I don't know how. He always comes off that way. I know. Very, very humble guy. He is. And he should gonna, be a little he's gonna be on the show what, at the end of the month next yeah. October twenty seventh. All right. 
to talk about the new Dawkins. And he's going to play some riffs. He is going to play some riffs. Okay. Yep, he's he's excited to come on. All right, very good. I'll be seeing him in a few weeks. And then he'll be seeing both of us right here. Exactly. <laughs> so, so getting back to box sets. Yes. Here's another one. Now, I will say, if there's a well that's dry, it's this well. But they keep shitting out box sets. <laughs> okay. Holy, <Deep> even worse. <laughs> You were, and I'm not even kidding. All right. As much as Deep Purple has hoard out that that live in Japan, they ain't got shit on the Motley Crew. Really? They they have a box set. They have a new box set, or they have a new edition of the um, Shout at the Devil 40th yeah. anniversary. So so what is it that uh, they were offering that we haven't heard already? Not a goddamn thing. All right nothing but there there there's demos on it again we have all these demos here's what's in the box set the original lp on orange and yellow splatter shout out the demos and rarities red and white splatter okay shout out the devil cd shout out the devil cassette cassette looks to, cassette wow looks to kill white seven inch too young to fall in love. Orange seven inch. Uh, so, so we're basically just working <laughs> off the, 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 the colors of the vinyl. Is yes. That yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> a metal pentagram, seven inch adapter. So a, <laughs> well, what is this devil board with metal plan shit? I don't know what that is. What the hell is that? Look, that up, find out what that is. What is oh, a? So where's the picture? What is a plan shit? I'm guessing that's this. That's it? Yeah, I'm guessing. Well, what is it? Looks like a napkin to me. Is it something you hang on your wall, or uh, what is that? I don't know. What is it called? It's a metal planchet. Where's that? Right there. Oh, there it is. Let's just look up what a planchet is. I don't know what that is. I mean, is that like a tapestry or something you hang on your wall or what a small board supported on casters typically heart-shaped and filled with vertical pencil used for automatic writing and in seances what so it's like a ouija type deal is it that's what they're saying that's what the definition is a so planchet. i'm gonna go back to this thing. i'm guessing that's this thing okay so is that something you set your drink on Oh, and here's the little thing that you probably set on this board, and then you ask it questions. Are Motley Crew ripping me off by buying this? <laughs> yes. A planchet. You put it on the planchet. Right. Maybe that's this thing. That's probably this thing up here. I have no idea. I, I don't, I, you know, I'm just asking because I honestly, I have no idea what that is. Yeah, I don't know. This is just, they're just repackaging the same old shit. The same old shit. What do you want to see? Do you want, is this the, what is this? I, oh, there it is. Do you want to see the video of this? And maybe they show them unboxing it or something? Um, plant shit, a metal disc to be stamped as a coin, a small plat, a small metal or plastic disc. All right. What is a planchet used for? A flat piece of metal or stamping as a coin or a coin blank. It's a coin? Well, I don't see no coin in here. But All I right. do see seance shit here and here. All right. Planchet. A planchet uh, is a round metal disc that is ready to be stuck as a coin. See, I've got a totally different definition. All right. What is a planchet board? An older word for planchet is flan. They also referred as blanks. Yeah, that's not what this is. I'm looking at planchet here, and it's all about Ouija type stuff. Okay. So it's 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 definitely that thing. All right. It's definitely this this board. That's your planchet board. Oh, I'm thinking this is your planchet. It's a, it's a Ouija planchet. Yeah. 
design, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So it, it's the actual little thing that you move around on the this thing. board. This thing down here. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And this is the planchet board. Okay. So you put it on the board and then that's the thing that you move around and it yeah. supposedly moves and gives you a message. And it tells you that Motley's fucking you with this box set. <laughs> All right. Do you want to watch this video to see if it shows them open in the box? Uh, yeah. Well, is it is, is just like, we're rocking, man. We're rocking with ACDC, man. We're partying. <laughs> we're partying. We're partying with the crew. We're going to open this box. We're going to be partying. Oh, oh, oh look at this. Holy Pictures. Shit. So is this the band opening this box? I have no idea. I've not seen this. All right. I don't know what this is, but it's only a minute long. Can't All right. That. Let's, Can't let's watch it. Let's see what we got. Let's blow it up. Oh, we're partying now. Oh, that's the show. Well, so that's the planchet. That's the mm -hmm. thing, the hole in the middle that uh, yeah. goes over the letter. So you have to sit there and spell it out. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right. How much does this thing cost? That's that's the question I had. It's like, okay, so what are they going to soak your fans for this? I mean, they've already taken their fans for 15 different sets of remasters and reissues and demos and everything else. Well, there's, no, right. there's no price here. Let me go to Amazon. So, so you basically get a Ouija board in a box yeah, and some vinyls. <laughs> okay. Um, and, oh yeah. The, well, forget a, the, the, uh, what is it? The splash vinyl. Yeah. The devil box set shout at the devil 40th anniversary. It is a mere paltry. 199.99 only 200 bones only 200 bucks <laughs> for one album with all that extra shit with all that with a ouija board <laughs> and a candle that and and splash and uh, a candle holder by the way it doesn't even come with a fucking candle well you get the you get the splash vinyl oh great and you get a the little sticky thing that you stick in a forty five shaped like a pentagram instead of a instead of the little snake with cock heads on it. You know the little round thing that you put yeah. in the middle of them. Yeah. You get a pentagram, one of those. Fantastic! What a deal! What a deal! So they're putting out demos. You get demos. Haven't we heard all those? Didn't they put out demos and rarities or something like that? Some supersonic relics yeah. and blah, blah, blah at one point. <laughs> Would you like to hear the demo of Hotter Than Hell, which became <gasps> Louder Than Hell? I can't wait. Which wasn't even on this album, was on the next album. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe they wrote it during this album, but it yeah. didn't come out till the next record. So why would you use that one? Supersonic relics. <clears throat> You say what I'm, I, why would you put that demo on the Shout at the Devil box set? The song came out on um, Theater of Pain. Mm hmm. <sighs> These guys stink. I guess it was early, man. All right, let's check out this, this wonderful demo video for Hotter Than Hell. I'm sure it's great. Okay. This, this might sell you, Neely. <laughs> this might. Pull your wallet out just in case. Well, you don't have to sell me on this because I'm already I'm already in. Oh, you buying it? I am. Yeah, I'll bet. All right, here we go. Come 
Stinks. Who's buying this? Two hundred bucks. Well, at least Vince is actually singing every line. Of course he is. It was nineteen eighty three. <laughs> it's long before he fucking discovered the buffet at the casino. Yeah, this is uh, this is very raw, Motley. Yeah, well, it's a demo, man. Yeah, it's a scratch track, man. My problem with this is they've already released this shit a hundred times. Mm -hmm. How many times have they re-released their catalog? At least four, right? Three or four. I mean, come on. This is bullshit. 200 fucking uh, but, bucks. But here's the whole thing. This is the Motley Crue Hotter Than Hell demo remastered. Oh, well, good. <laughs> the, 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 the demo has been remastered. Because <laughs> when I hear a demo, I want to hear it remastered. <laughs> <laughs> well, doesn't remastered actually make it like an official release? Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> remastered demo. The remastered demo. <laughs> right. So we made the demo sound even better than the actual demo. That's right. All right. We've smoothed out the demo to make it less demo-y. It's yeah, less demo-y. <laughs> it's more mainstream. <laughs> There's the current lyrics. Hee-haw! Hee-haw in hell! <laughs> it's hysterical. Oh. Yeah, so that's that's what's going on in Motleyville. All right. You can uh, you can get this this wonderful wonderful box set. Are are people this dumb? Are well uh, again this 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 doesn't appeal to the mass audience. This right. just appeals to the hardcores and and the people who are they have to have everything that uh, their favorite band uh, you know puts out. Mm-hmm. They got to, they're, you know, they're, what is the word I'm using? Uh, completionist or. Yeah. Complete. Yeah. Completionist. They, they got to have it all. They got to have, have everything. everything. Got to have every piece of, uh, everything that they released. They've sure. got to have it all. If long haired Mike was still alive, yeah. I guarantee you, he would have bought this. He would get that. Yes. He would have put it up next to his music to crash cars by box set. Yep. <laughs> Ugh. All right, one more music one, and then I'll... But, but does it have the Japanese uh, bonus track? That's for the 50th anniversary. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're, holding, well, no. we're holding that back for the, yeah. next, the next release. For the next round of bullshit. <laughs> All right, one last musical one before I, um, I uh, give in to you to, to run some stories here. Um, but, but, but. Uh, probably the biggest news of the last week in classic metal. Yes. Kicks ends. Kicks is done. They played their last show. Yeah. Well, they've been talking about that for, you know, a couple of months that they were going to come to an end. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, here's the question. Okay. Does this, does this end? Does this actually end? Or does something come in the future that goes, well, we called it a day in the, uh, the, the, the fall of 2023, mm -hmm. but there was such a demand for us to play, uh, what is, whatever what is festival or something, well, M3 what or is, what, is, what is the show over there in Maryland where they're M3 from? M3. There was such a big demand 
for us to headline M3 or be one of the M3 bands that we decided we were going to, you know, take them, you know, kick the mothballs off, blow the dust off, get the kicks wagon rolling again. And so here we are. I don't think it would be for that because they would get killed for that. I think it would be, it would be something kind of like the, um, you know, we have a friend that is uh, suffering from blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And we wanted to do anything we could to help them. And this is the only way we could help them. So all the proceeds and we had such a great time. We missed, now we're going to do it. <laughs> we missed each other because yeah. we've been apart for the last two, three years. Exactly. And, uh, we realize the chemistry is still there. Mm-hmm. And the people, magic, not the chemistry. Oh, yeah. The use magic, the words. That's right. The magic is still there, and there's still a demand for kicks. Yeah. And so we decided that it was time to continue on because, you know, why, uh, why end a good thing? Yeah. At heart, we're just rock and rollers, and it makes no sense not to be rocking and rolling. Exactly. I can hear that. I and definitely you, could hear that. Piece. Besides, what else are we going to do? We're, yeah. we're rock and rollers at heart, and this is what we do. And so we just, we've just embraced it. We've embraced our legacy. We've embraced our, um, our, our body of work. Yeah. And uh, we're just going to continue on. It was a mistake to uh, call it a day prematurely because we still have a lot of life left in us to, you know, give the fans what they want. This could happen. Eddie Trunk will issue the call to action to reunite kicks. (laughs) Could very well be. Call to action. I got kicks back together. You know, I got on the phone with um, with the guys from Kicks, and they're going to be here on a special edition of That Rocks to announce that I've brought them back together for M3. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I think the difference between Kicks and all these other bands that have done that is they were all big and Kicks wasn't. Yeah, they, they were a second and third tier band at the most. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like they kicks. Had, They're okay. But. I mean, they they had you know they had a couple of cool videos. The one video with uh, Steve Whiteman was on the show. The one girl on there, um, Cold Blood. Actually, I think the Cold Blood video. Mm-hmm. Uh, the chick on that video, she was smoking hot. She had a nice rack. Little little, uh, pull her up real quick. Dark haired girl, little little brunette, pretty. She was out there dancing around, kicking around balloons and shit. Look at. And uh, I asked Steve, I said, uh, who was that girl? He goes, oh, I don't know. She was just some, you know, she was just some video model that they brought in for the shoot. We didn't know her. But, uh, you know, the the record label, who whoever orchestrates these videos, right. brought her in. I said, well, was she as hot? in person as she was in the video or what was it? Oh yeah. She was a smoking hot chick. <laughs> I remember right. asking him about that. Let's see. There she is. Right there. She's kind of a. She kind of had a, 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 a Christy alley look about her. Before the donuts. Yeah. Hiya. give it to kicks they were catchy as fuck <laughs> well they had some good tunes but i i especially enjoyed this video because i dug the you know i dug, dug the, the chick the brunette girl 
I mean, she, she was a Christy Alley kind of a knockoff kind of yeah. girl. She is. This is catchy, though. There we go. Play a little more of this. Here's my question. Was this a huge, and I mean poison level huge hit? No, it, it was kind this, of late. It was late in the game. 90s? When was this? No, this was very late 80s, probably 90. So right when I was out of the country. Yeah, it was right near the end of the era. You okay. know, I mean, it was, it was, again, too little, too late. I, I mean, because these guys, this should have been a big song, like a big skid row warrant poison type of song this is a cool song you know what what and they got the they looked the part yeah but it was it was coming to an end i mean this was the same time as what like something to believe in and shit right well this was this was like slaughter this was about the slaughter you know fly to the angels the the uh, stick it to you now slaughter was huge though were these guys big like slaughter no they, they didn't quite catch the, you know, catch the, uh, 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 popularity, but it was right in that same era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somebody's in there saying this is the same album that had don't close your eyes. Right. Now, that's a great song too. Yeah. Well, it's blow my fuse among that's other a great things. song too. Yeah. Um, among other things, as, <laughs> uh, we said in our first, <laughs> you know, one of our first, uh, right. collaborations on the air together. That's right. Yeah, no, people are saying that Slaughter came after this. Well, it did. This is 88. Okay. So Slaughter, what, came out in 90? 90, yeah. 90. So it was within two years. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. So Poison would have been, I'm just comparing everything to Poison well, because Poison was a huge. Like Open Up and Say Ah uh, or. Or Flesh and Blood. Flesh and Blood. They must have toured with Poison, no? Same era. So. Same era. Same way with, uh, you know, Warrant. Yeah, I know Warrant toured with Poison because I saw that tour. Mm-hmm. And Warrant fucking smoked Poison. Jesus, Warrant was kick ass, and then Poison came on and just were Brett with his little silly, stupid dance and shit. <laughs> I did not enjoy Poison live at all. No, they were I, not good. Did you like them live? No, I, I wasn't a fan. I mean, I've seen them obviously, but yeah. uh, I saw them. I saw them on that uh, Firehouse Damn Yankees Poison Tour. And I left. I, I Firehouse sounded like a garage band. Damn Yankees kicked ass. And then I left about the third song into Poison because they they had it so loud. Right. It was distorted. Now, and, was that still CC or was that Kotzen? Um, who was, knows because you left. No, no, it was Kotzen. Okay. But it was it was on the uh, flesh and or not or what was the one with Kotzen on it? Uh, the, the seven days over you on it. The, it's the, it's the, a brown the, cover. A brown cover with the with the face on it. Yeah, like cut out of a tree or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah that. Poison discography. I can't remember what that's called. Dis- native tongue. Native tongue. Yeah. yeah, native tongue. Yeah, it was on the native tongue tour. Yeah, because uh, Damn Yankees was coming to the end of their run, and uh, Firehouse was coming up at that time, and so they opened, and Damn Yankees was second, and Poison was the headliner, and by third song in, I left. I just, I was just like, Ugh, I can't take this. Yeah, that was Poison's attempt to be Cinderella. Yeah, <laughs> actually, it was just boy. Yeah, I'm looking at that album though. That has some good songs on it. Yeah, but that that tour, I mean, well, the production for that tour was just horrific. Yeah, well, it was kind of over at that point. Well, they it? were again. They, they the other bands sounded okay, and then Poison came out and they cranked it up like 10, 10 volume points. Right, and they were just trying to make them loud, and it was just loud and obnoxious. And I was just like, oh, I can't take this. I gotta leave. Yeah. 
What are interesting people that played on that record? I just pulled it up real quick. Um, as in addition to the to the Poison guys and Richie Kotzen, uh, Tower of Power added horns. Timothy B. Schmidt <laughs> from Eagles from the Eagles did backing vocals. Okay, Tommy Funderburk. Where do we know him from? Tommy Funderburk. Uh, he did backing vocals. And then um, Sheila E. played some drums. All right. Sheila E. I didn't know that. Did you? Well, she, no, because she loves the glamorous life. Yeah, she does. She did for a while. <laughs> Another one with some great cans. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, back to kicks. So kicks. Let me kill this. Kicks played their final gig in um, Maryville. Perryville Post Pavilion in Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, sold out, I'm assuming. I would think. Would you like to see some videos? Sure. And, the... and, who, and who, who came back to the band for their final gig? Uh, that would be uh, Ronnie Yonkins and Brad Ronnie. Divins. All right. Ronnie Yonkins. Yeah, I know nothing about kicks. I know Steve Whiteman. I've interviewed him. But I really don't know much about that. They they were like a band when I was out of the country, and I just did not. By the time by the time I got back, they were long since not a thing. Okay, you know, so I I don't remember them very well. But let's see, they got a bunch of songs here. I'll just list the songs. You tell me to stop when you hear one you want. Atomic bombs, the kid, midnight dynamite. Scarlet Fever, Red Light, Green Light, TNT, No King Around Rosie, Girl Money. I know that one. Yeah, we know that one. We actually Blow made a little bit of that yeah. early on with us. Yep. Blow My Fuse, uh, Mighty Mouth, Don't Close Your Eyes, Cold Shower, For Shame, Yeah, 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 The Itch. Man, they played a lot of songs. Yeah, they played a lot of early stuff. Yeah, Cold Blood. Mm -hmm. And then them leaving the stage for the final time. Okay. Any of those you want to hear? Let's let's uh, do girl money. Let's see. Since girl. it's sort of like a thing between you and I, as yeah. far as like our history is concerned. Ooh, that's loud. Oh, wait a minute. I pushed the wrong button here. Let me hit this button. Is it? Kicks. Girl money. Want to ram her hole. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right. There we go. Sounds, they sound pretty good to me. Well, you know what? I, I got to give Steve Whiteman credit. The guys kept it together after all yeah. these decades. He, I mean, just I, look, I, he looks about the, I mean, he's old, but he, know, he looks, I think he's pushing like 70 at this point. He looks like the guy in the video that we just played his dad doing the same stuff. Right. Yeah. He's still, he's still in shape. He's still healthy. Yeah. Still sounds good. Keeping it together. Yeah. And he's the one that said that he wanted to quit because he didn't want to suck. He still sounds pretty good. Yeah, he's pretty funny. Yeah, so he's a real nice guy though. I've, I've, mm -hmm. you know, we've had him on the show, but I've run into him a couple of times out on the, you know, on the show at, you sure. know, out on the road. 
and uh very very nice very friendly very you know easy going guy you know right. no pre- mm-hmm. you know no pretense at all just just a cool dude yeah yeah i don't have no nothing bad to say about kicks i just don't know their their catalog very sure. well i mean i know i know that song i i probably know like four songs i know blow my fuse i bet you know more than four uh, well which of these that did, did i just named what i know I know Blow My Fuse. Let me go through this list again. I know Cold Blood because we just played it. Yeah, and then I was like, yeah, I know that one. The Itch, no idea. Yeah, 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 no idea. For Shame, no idea. Cold Shower, nope. I know Don't Close Your Eyes. Yep. Mighty Mouth, no. Blow My Fuse, yes. Girl, Girl Money, yes. Yep. No ring around Rosie. No. I think that's uh that's kind of like a little bit of a ACDC tribute type of thing to yeah tip of the hat to ACDC. Okay. I, I bet you know green light, red light go. Let's try that. Red light, I, green light go. Let's bet try you know it. that one. <laughs> Is this how this song always goes, or is this like a live version that has like live version? I'll skip into the middle then. Yeah, I don't know this. Don't know that one. All right. Well, Steve Whiteman is 67 years old. Is that all? Like a mere I, 67. Like I said, it's pushing 70. I'm sure you know Midnight Dynamite, right? Yeah, I think I know that. Midnight Dynamite. Yeah, that's the one. Yep, that's yeah, the one. I know that one. Scarlet Fever, should I know that? Probably not. The Kid? I don't know that. And Atomic Bombs. I mean, I know a few. I just... Dude, it's, it's it's the weirdest thing in the when I was in Korea, and that's you know that's right at this time, eighty eight. I was definitely in Korea the whole year. Sure. Um, what what would happen is we would get shipments from from the states in the PX, and you'd go to the PX shopping, and that was like my thing was go right to the record section, and if there was anything that had long hair on it, I bought it because I, I didn't know any of these bands at all. You know, none of the bands and only stuff that ever got there was like the super popular stuff. So I remember buying uh, like Injustice for All because it was super popular. And I remember um, getting like the Poison, um, whatever that would have been at the time, 88, whatever, the Flesh and Blood probably. Um, you know, Motley Crue, anything Motley did would come out there. I, I remember getting that stuff. But a lot of times there was this club that we used to go to called the MTV club. And it was just this old retired, uh, army guy. And this old retired army guy would get tapes sent of just MTV that he would play in the, in the club. And we would go in the club and just drink and watch, you know, it was the closest we could get to anything stateside. So that was kind of how I discovered music and the stuff that they were playing on MTV at that point was like, heavier than this was like doro i don't know if it was the show that was on or whatever that that was getting taped but it was all like doro and halloween and danzig and stuff like that so i megadeth metallica so that was the stuff that i kind of gravitated to at that point yeah i don't i don't remember kicks ever being there i would have bought it i know i would have bought it if i would have seen it just because the back of it would have been four or five guys with long hair right so i would have bought it but i i never owned this until much i think the first kicks album i ever owned was um i think the first anything i ever owned with steve whiteman was that funny money band yeah after kicks 
And then because I like that, then I went back and got some of the kick stuff or stole it off of Napster or whatever. <laughs> That's probably what I did was just downloaded it from Napster. Sure. You know, cause I needed it for doing this show and then I just sort of listened to it and sort of acquainted myself, yeah. but a blue collar rock band out of America. Yeah. Well, they're done. Would you like to see their walking away? Yeah. Let's just walk away, pal. For the final time. Let's walk away, friends. All right. Let's see what they do here. Isn't that the guy that almost died? Yeah, I think so. The chocolate guy? Yeah. Mm. I thought that was a roadie. <laughs> I thought that guy was a roadie. Yeah, you can always tell the, the guys who haven't been doing this in a while that just kind of joined the band on the stage. Yeah, that guy looks he looks like an English teacher. Yeah, well, I was gonna say he looks like a science professor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got the glasses and the beard. Yeah. The he does beard. not look rock. No. All He's right. one of those guys who hasn't done this in a long time. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to bring out some people that are behind the scenes and they're the reason we're out here. First of all. Who are you? <laughs> Mark Shaker on bass guitar. Sorry. I'm nervous. We'd like to bring out the guy that resuscitated our career. We Eddie Trunk. <laughs> <laughs> We're dead in the water, and this guy called me up and said, Steve, I can book this fucking band all over the country if you give me a chance. And I said, <laughs> And he proved me wrong. Please welcome Sullivan Pig. Sullivan This man's the reason we're still out here doing it. But you're not still out there doing it. You're done. Sorry. In front of a wall of marshals, man. Right. We went out in style. Yeah, man. Or anything that requires a brain, 
Please welcome our manager, Madeline Scarpola. Madeline, you are a bride. That fucking guy is skinny. <laughs> yeah, he's a little guy. Look at how skinny he is. He is. He's a skinny little dude. He's 70 years old. He still weighs about a buck 20. Right. Jeez. All right. Did she know he's going to do this? Where's she at? Madeline, come out and take a bow. Not a bow movement, just a bow. <laughs> she's fixing a problem somewhere, no doubt. Maybe she's taking There she comes. Did you wipe? Give it up for Madeline. Did, you, did he say, did you wipe? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Next, the boys, we make them rock. They make them roll. Our sound guy who's been with since, I don't know, Joe was a drum tech, he was a monitor tech. He was a guitar tech, he was a sound guy in Funny Money, and he's been the sound guy for all these kick shows. Please welcome Joe Corcoran. I do you want to watch this whole thing, or should I skip around? Because it's, I mean, let's do we get, give a shit? Let's get near the end here. All right, let's try this. That's it. Yep. And our uh, good friend CMS Mikey got to interview them. Yeah, he did. Remember that? Years mm -hmm. ago when he wanted to get involved and, you know, yeah. get into the music and, you know, be somewhat of a journalist or a broadcaster of some kind. We hooked him up to interview Kicks. Mm -hmm. That's Michael now. Yes. You can't call him Mikey anymore. He's fucking. He, he's CMS Mikey to me. I don't give a shit. Uh, he's Michael. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, um, um, Michael, Michael Yakum Esquire. Yeah. Once he, once he graduated college and started banging pussy, he, was, he just all of a sudden became Michael. <laughs> he's Michael. I can't call him Mikey anymore. I do. I still call him Mikey. <laughs> he sends me texts at least once a day. Me and him are going to lunch next Saturday. Are you? Yep. Good for you. Yeah. We were trying to today, but I just didn't have any time, but yeah. I'm going to cut out some time to actually go meet him for lunch next hey, week. So he's, he's talking about moving near your neck of the woods. Yeah. I keep hearing that he wants to do stuff that's local up here. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. He's, he's supposedly, uh, you know, he's thinking he's going to be moving right down the street from you. Where's he going to move to streets, Tucky streets, Tucky. That's what I'm hearing. Why does he need meth? I don't know the answer, but, uh, that's, that's what he had told me all right well hey more power to him i got some great trailer parks up. never mind 